Okay, great. Well, I have seven o'clock, so let's get started. Welcome everyone to the March 14th, 2022 regular board meeting of Vehicle Board of Education. Uh, we are live at Harmon Elementary and streaming via Zoom as we have been for the last couple of years now. So uh, welcome and Tiffany, would you call the roll please? Absolutely. Ms. Kawhi? Here. Mr. Wilson? Here. Dr. Middleton? Here. Mr. Schwiedemann? Here. And Mr. Duell? Here. Everyone, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Here, please have a motion to adopt this evening's agenda. So moved. Second. Tiffany. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Dr. Middleton? Aye. Mr. Schwederman? Aye. Ms. Kawhi? Aye. And Mr. Duwa? Aye. And may I please have a motion to approve the Board of Education work session and regular meeting minutes of Monday, February 14th, 2022, and the special meeting of Thursday, February 17th, 2022. So moved. Second. Tiffany. Dr. Middleton? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Ms. Kawhi? Aye. Mr. Schwederman? Aye. Mr. Duell? Aye. Uh, accommodations and public comments. Dr. Raymond? Thank you, Mr. Duell. Uh, we have a couple of guests. If you guys want to come on down, we have uh, Celia Addison and Becca Cash here to talk to us about the principal superintendent advisory. Welcome. Thank you. So hi everyone, um, my name is Becker Cash. I'd like to give a quick description of the Superintendent Advisory Board. So we're a group of students that um, meet once a month with uh, Dr. Amy and Dr. Waller um, to offer our opinions and give advice on any sort of topic going on at the school. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I'm gonna start off with a few events we have going on at Oakwood right now that we're really excited about. So first on the list is TA, that is our turnabout dance. So basically turnabout means girls ask guys, but you know, we kind of all just mix it up and we have a great time. So that is this Friday. And then recently we just had the musical, which is the Wizard of Oz. I was not able to make it to it, but I heard really great things. So I'm glad to see we have a strong artistic community at Oakwood. And if I could see this with a couple yeah. more. All right, and then Academic One State again. I have no, they've won it 12 times. That's Definitely very impressive. So I have a strong academic streak here too. And then no masks is fairly recent. That was enacted, I think, right after February break. I think that it's a great, great middle ground because we've gotten to that point where we're able to transition away from some of that personal protective equipment. But people who choose to have the mask on, they still have that choice to feel comfortable and they definitely are judged for it. And it's a fairly common choice. So I appreciate the, the choice we have there. Yeah, and speaking of the no masks, we're here to talk about uh, how the pandemic and the and all that has impacted our time at school. Um, I guess we'll start with the negatives and move to the positives. So some of the issues we've noticed with the pandemic have been um, a loss of uh, learning or um, some people falling behind. I mean, not so much now, but once we got back from Christmas break, like early January, a lot of students were quarantined or tested positive for COVID, and hence they missed a bunch of um, school and a lot of the in-person learning. And I heard from a lot of people when they got back, there was issues or they felt behind and didn't really understand what was going on in their class. And speaking to that learning loss um, with the half days and virtual uh, learning last year, I've heard, of, I've heard of a lot of people and personally that uh, they've missed some of the material learned in other classes. Like for example, I missed the last half of chemistry due, the, due to the start of the pandemic and taking AP chemistry the next year was definitely a bit of catching up. And the second issue that we've noticed with uh, COVID has been the socialization or lack of such. Um, with that quarantine, a lot of people have been isolated and we've noticed that from talking with our peers and in general that a lot of people have ex been experiencing more social anxiety, a lot, little bit of mental, mental illness, I guess, depression, and that's been a bit of an issue we've noticed on to the positives. All right, so 
this is kind of a transition to positive because this next point that's not necessarily positive but it's a potential positive so it's something that we can hope for i think that a lot of the social traditions of oakwood are what make this town special what gives it character what helps students feel that special sense of belonging at home being in a small community like this one so a lot of the people who carry those traditions and are used to them are graduating or even if they haven't graduated their juniors you know they're on their way out and our younger classes have definitely come up in an age of more independence when it comes to learning, when it comes to extracurriculars, all of that, because so much has become virtual, they definitely have their own sort of separate circles going on. So I think that it, it should be a very easy transition, but if we can just push to make sure we're getting everybody involved and having some kind of collective community, even inclusive and diverse is wonderful, but just having something collective that we can all you know, relate to, I think that's something that we would all appreciate, especially being senior who's leading, I kind of feel that responsibility to hope that we have some of that in the next few years. And then also the positives of virtual learning is there's a lot of room for taking initiative. You know, if you, if you were struggling in a class, you have Google Classroom and you have all the notes available to you. Even if your teacher, like you, let's say you can't ask your teacher the 15th time how to do a basic circuit, you know, you're a little embarrassed. You can go on to Khan Academy or anything and you can find a video that will help you out. So I think students have become more independent in ways that are positive for those who take initiative, but for those who don't necessarily take initiative, they aren't told to, or maybe they don't have that maturity level yet. I think there needs to be a transition to a culture of, you know, it's okay to learn on your own. It's okay to learn remotely, but it's also okay to ask for help. And we're going to inspire you to take that initiative to, to learn remotely and to look for resources that you can find. So I think that's been great. And then also we have virtual events, some that aren't even necessarily associated with Oakwood, you know, seniors and juniors who are on college searches. There is an entire world of information out there. I am towards the end of my college searching process, thank God, but there's, <laughs> there's still so much that I have never heard about that I've never touched and so much of it could be such so positive for me. So I think that's awesome that we have access to so much. I think it's important that we're making sure students have devices, that students have you know, Wi-Fi at home or students who don't have Wi-Fi, they have somewhere they can go to get that because that's not necessarily always a guarantee. But yeah, I think there's a lot of great transitions with virtual learning. And I think there's, you know, strong potential to really make that an asset in our next few years. That's all. They're both very articulate and very sharp. And never hesitate to share their opinion. No, much appreciate <laughs> well just uh I'm, I'm always curious when you guys meet what kind of bubbles up to the top you hit, you hit a couple of things with covid but what what are other non-covid related topical issues that are making the rounds yeah so um i know i believe two meetings ago we discussed um graduation robe colors in the past we've had a white and blue i believe for the female and male and we discussed the pros and cons of switching to just all one color to uh, help everyone feel included and not have to fit into one category or the other. Okay. And then also, I think the common theme I've seen in the past few meetings that I've been to and even before that is just like the want for information because you know a lot of us don't necessarily always know what's going on, especially once you get, I can speak to the older high schooler experience because that's my most recent experience, but once you get to that college age, a lot of people, they don't know when to apply for things. They don't know where to look. And our counselors are good at giving us resources, but even that is limited because you know, they have a ton of people to be accountable for. So I think people definitely just wanna be in the know about what their options are, what their resources are. I know a lot of people actually pay for like outside college counseling, but that's something I've explored just to make sure that you're not missing anything. And I don't know that that should necessarily be um, a requirement to really you know take advantage of your talents and push that so i think people definitely ask for um information that's the main request on the student side great, great points thank you yeah. good if we have a meeting tomorrow actually yeah yeah right thank you very much thank you both nice thank you. all right thank you. thank you have a good thank night you. They did take a little bit of my thunder, so I'll touch base on a couple of these accommodations.
congratulations to sixth, uh, sixth grader Avery Insolite uh, placing in the creative communication of Paul Poetry Contest for poem, her voice in his song. Pretty impressive. You're replacing the top 10 of thousands of entries, and you can read her award winning poem on the Harmon News page or on our district website. Congratulations also to the uh, Ohio, or I'm sorry, the High School Academic Team for winning the school championship. There were 16 and 0 academic team, which is different than academic. Okay. And then the academic, uh, as you heard, won the first place in the state overall. It's their 12th consecutive win. And that means that they qualify for the national competition, which will be in April. And that is going to be uh, virtual. Typically, they've traveled and they've done it over the last couple of years. They have been virtual, and I would anticipate maybe that it turns into a virtual thing. A little disappointed that they don't get to go to Hawaii or Washington or wherever that may be. That's uh, great. The nine member team, there were uh, 28 individual gold medals, 26 individual silver medals, 22 individual bronze medals for high scores, and students competed as a team. Alternates are 29 individual gold medals, 30 individual silver, and 27 bronze medals, which is always fun when they close them up and carry them on. It's pretty impressive. Lots of, lots of uh, students were involved in that, and the alternates were congratulations. And the team was coached by Lori Morris. Also, congratulations to the cast and crew of Wizard of Oz. Uh, they had a busy weekend. They had a show on Thursday, Friday, and two on Saturday. And that was the one with Paul Smith and Harmon and students as well as Munchkins, or as Munchkins, which is really pretty cool. A lot of energy, uh, lots of things going on. And it was horrible. There was lots going on on the stage. <laughs> and then uh, speaking also of great shows, the annual Young and Art is presented by the Oakwood Schools Fine Arts Boosters. That's going to be this Saturday, March the 19th at the high school. It's from 7 to 9.30. There are all kinds of art on display, roaming performers, family activities, and much more. You can find out more details on the Fine Arts Boosters web page on the district website. And then also, uh, speaking of artists, and move us on here to congratulations to the following uh, Oakwood High School artists who are regional winners at this year's Governor's Young Art Exhibit. We have Emma Olney. We have Bella Butler. Cecilia Gower. Tabitha Kinsman. Ruby McComb, Sasha Gustavo. These talented Oakwood High School students are now advancing to the state competition. Very impressive. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of, and that young at art thing is super cool for those maybe who haven't been there. It's really worth trying to get over there on, was it Friday? Saturday. Yeah, super cool event. Saturday, Saturday uh, yeah. Dr. Lang, curriculum showcase. Tonight we're going to hear from our media specialists at the elementary school lane, Colts and Molly Ford, and they're going to share some information about the lumberjack reading list. Uh, we're going to hear what it what it is and how this program started, and then they will also share the criteria on how the titles are selected, what is a, a wall of famer, and how this reading challenge is really pushes our students outside of the comfort zones. And um, they are exposed to different genres and multiple reading formats. And we also will hear from some of the students. like a reading challenge for the kids to read some of the best books. We choose the books that 
are the kids are gonna love but maybe wouldn't find otherwise. This gives them like new, new uh, ideas for people to read. So for example, one of our books is Ancestor Approved and it's short stories which kids won't normally <laughs> pick up. So it pushes them outside their box, something that they would have never picked up when they just came to library that week. The criteria is quality literature. It is fourth through sixth grade appropriate, okay? Um, it has to be male and female interest, okay? So that sometimes. Um, and then we're looking for genre diversification. Try to get like a mystery, something that's mysterious, get something that's realistic, get something that's historical. Action was one that was super popular this year. That was Canyon's Edge um, that they really liked, a lot of them said. Oh, and then this year, another one that was, I think, a challenge, but they liked it, it was this, and this is nonfiction, and it is a whopper, but it is written amazingly suspenseful. It's about the boys' soccer team that was trapped in the Thai cave, and when I book talked them at the beginning of the year, this was the book that that wouldn't stay in, you know, that kept being checked out. And then immediately when it came back, somebody wanted it again. And they were like, that book was amazing. And, I, and something that they never would have read, probably otherwise, because it looks like a pretty daunting nonfiction book. What's the hot new thing in literature? Books in diversity. We wanted to be sure we were covering that. We try to use books in historical fiction. Graphic novels, kids love them, and if that gets them reading, so we've chosen graphic novel. This year we chose a book that became a movie for the first time. So they also have to have been published in the last three years. And we did something a little bit different this year where we chose, um, I wanna say nine books that were exactly the same. And then Harmon had two that were unique to Harmon, and Smith had two that were unique to Smith. And part of that too becomes our readers are different. And that sounds kind of like what in the same district, but our buildings and our readers are very different. Well, there's a lot of different kinds of books that you can choose from and uh, different genres. And it's also nice to have a list of books already picked out for you so you don't have to hunt around for different kinds of books. I like it because there's lots of different books to choose from and books I probably wouldn't read on like a, reg a regular day. I really like how there are many different genres and there are different styles so it won't be all fiction or non-fiction but it can be from Mars, it can be someone getting stuck in a canyon or it can be non-fiction. I like Dalton but I liked Measuring Up because it was a graphic novel. last year and it just felt like I accomplished something big and it made me I think it made me a better reader and I wanted to do that this year again and the books this year are amazing I only have one book left so I'm really excited to read that last book that's great thanks Kimmy good program and I'm pretty sure that presentation didn't put itself together. So thanks, Tracy, if, if you had your fingers on that again. So much appreciated. Uh, board reports. Uh, we'll start with Darren because I believe he has one. Uh, yeah, two actually. Two. Um, I had the opportunity to uh, participate in the 10 um, the Open Technology uh, Committee as a board liaison or board member of the group. And uh, Mr. Sprout. Uh, spoke uh, and went over with the group to help build our understanding of where the district is moving forward uh, and looking to move forward in terms of the district's uh, use of technology. Um, for those of us that are new on the committee, gave us a, a look into the history um, and the challenges that the district may have had, may have had over the years with transitions of different different types of uh, networks and uh, different you know store. Uh, storage problems at different things that every organization comes across. Um, it was really enlightening and it was, um, I'm thankful to Mr. Sprout and his leadership uh, for helping uh, us to understand and then start talking about where that committee wants to move forward uh, with the district next and make recommendations to the board uh, and the administration on things that we can do to improve the technology for our students. So um, that was, was
was just one meeting, so I'll have more to share as the meetings continue throughout the rest of the year. Which is good. Um, and then I had the opportunity as um, <clears throat> to sit uh, with uh, cabinet and uh, and Dr. Um, Doc, Dr. Ramey uh, and uh, work with uh, the district's NEOLA uh, representative. NEOLA is the organization that provides um, policy recommendations based on changes to Ohio Revised Code and federal laws for the school district. And um, so the, this evening, I know um, the, some of the policy recommendations that we have in front of us for action tonight are as a result of those things. And uh, it's good to be a part of that, to understand uh, and know the direction that we're heading in and the work that um, cabinet level is doing to make sure we have good policies in front of us to consider. Great. That's what I have. Thank you. Thanks. Lauren, anything? Yeah, I reached out to Sean Cahill, who's the president of the Athletic Food Service, um, and he wanted to share that they're having their spring fundraiser um, coming up in April. Uh, they're having silent auction, part of which will take place online and part will be in person at the DCC on April 9th, starting at 7 p.m. Um, they're going to have a live event, indoor outdoor seating. You can um, bid on some items in person that won't be online. And your $50 ticket purchase includes addition to the event, hors d'oeuvres, two adult beverages, um, tickets to the on site raffle will also be available for purchase. Um, they're still accepting donations and sponsorships, and you can contact Susan, sorry, Suzanne Donnelly, if you would like to sponsor or donate. And other little things, um, their spirit wear spring sale starts Saturday, March 19th. There's information about that on the website, as well as um, if you're interested in purchasing a sports banner or sports program. And... Uh, if you have a spring athlete and you haven't joined the boosters, there's still time to do so, and you can do that on the website. Great. Thank you. Laura? Yeah, so I reached out to um, the PTO groups and have a couple things to share with the board. Um, so Smith PTO, um, Justin Lyles is the president. He said how they've done um, well with their fundraiser fundraising in the fall. And so they're looking to focus more on community events and social events in the spring. So there will be a parents night in on March 18th. So it's just a few days. Um, and then Harmon PTO and Smith PTO will be doing a joint family movie night. They're looking at April 9th. Um, uh, they'll watch a movie and have refreshments. So that should be fun. Um, and then uh, Dayton Dragons game is returning this year um, and Smith PTO is inviting people to come and join friends and family, classmates, et cetera. And that's on May 7th. And then uh, they will be yeah, at Smith, they'll be selling Kona ice on the last day of school. Mm -hmm. So that's fun. Um, and then as far as the Harmon PTO, um, there will be a St. Patrick's Day bake sale, which is good. And then, of course, the joint activity with Smith. Um, and unfortunately, the golf tournament was canceled because there were a lack of there was a lack of volunteers for that. So, um, not much to announce from the junior high and high school PTO. Other than the last meeting of the year will be on May twelfth at noon, and it will probably be virtual because people have been able to join at work, and that's been going well for them. So, good. Thank you. Yeah. John? Yes, for the Oakland Schools Foundation, uh, prizes for the Harlemert Entrepreneur Entrepreneurship Competition, which encourages OHS students to explore what it means to be an entrepreneur, will be awarded out at a breakfast next week on March 24th. This year's 19 students entered and all will receive a prize. The Parker Love of Teaching and Lifelong Learning Award is still open for nominations. Nominees must have taught in the district for at least five years, encourage learning in new and exciting ways, and demonstrate dedication to creating curious, lifelong learners and their students. Nominations will be accepted until April 6th. Uh, to nominate an educator, reach out to Bree Andrews at the Oakland Schools Foundation. And the Flourish campaign is progressing very well with the goal to break ground this summer. Uh, there's also an effort to name the new band space, the Alumni Band Room being led by current band parents and band alumni. 
All gifts of any size remain greatly appreciated as we seek to help make these new spaces a uh, reality for future Oakwood students. Uh, the generous offer from a dedicated donor and alumni still stands to match gifts and commitments to the campaign of $25,000 and above. So if you guys could grab your checkbooks today and make that happen, that'd be great. That'll be going through April. The match includes multi-year pledges. The arts compromise many of the highest participated co-curricular and extracurricular programs in the high school and junior high. OSF would like to thank the community for embracing Flourish, which will expand and improve much needed space at OHS and OJS and will enhance and celebrate the arts as well will inspire the younger students as they rise through Oakwood schools. Philanthropy 101 has kicked off a fundraising campaign to endow the important philanthropic education program so that it will live on into perpetuity. OSF trustee Lisa Sanford is leading the efforts there. And if you would like to make or like to get more information or have any questions about OSF fundraising items, uh, include the Flourish campaign. Please see Brandy McFall. That's right. Thank you. You're welcome. It's good board reports, guys. Mm -hmm. Impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to move the budget to finance. Recommendations made to approve the amounts and rates for tax year 2022-2023. A motion, please, to approve the recommendation at 5A. <clears throat> so moved. Tiffany. Dealer's choice. <laughs> Mr. Wilson. Aye. <laughs> Mr. Schwederman. Aye. Ms. Kawai. Aye. Dr. Middleton. Aye. And Mr. Duwell. Aye. Item B is information, or item uh, B is informational for the monthly financial reports. We have that in your Thank you. Any unfinished business? Hearing none. Any new business by the board? Hearing none. Dr. Raymond, turn it over to you for administrative reports and superintendent recommendations. Here you go. Item 8A recommendations to need to adopt the attached resolution authorizing required. Third grade assessments in paper format for the 22 23 school year. A motion, please, to approve the recommendation at 8A. So moved. Second. Tiffany. Uh, Dr. Middleton? Aye. Ms. Kawai? Aye. Mr. Swearman? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. And Mr. Duval? Aye. Next couple are just informational. 8B is presented for review of the social studies standards. Um, Plans are to request approval at the April board meeting. And then also, HC is presented for review of the policy updates that Mr. Spearman was talking about earlier. We'll ask for approval at the April 11th board meeting as well. I keep going, Dr. Amy, to nine personnel items and resignations non renewals. Sure. Uh, so, if we can take item 9A and 10A through D together. Sure. We have a motion, please, to approve the recommendations at 9A and 10A, B, C, and D. Second. Tiffany. Mr. Swearman? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Dr. Middleton? Aye. Ms. Kawai? Aye. And Mr. Duwell? Aye. And Tiffany, if you would take us into executive session. Recommendation is made to enter executive session for the specific purpose of considering the compensation of public employee or official in matters required to be kept confidential by federal law, federal rules, or state statutes by Division G5 of Section 121.22 of the Revised Code. A motion, please, to move into executive session. So moved. Second. Tiffany? Dr. Milton? Aye. Ms. Kawai? Aye. Mr. Schwederman? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. And Mr. Duell? Aye. Right. Uh, thank you all. That concludes this evening's uh, meeting. When the board exits executive session, uh, we will immediately adjourn with taking no further action on behalf of the district. So thank you all. Thank you for those participating via Zoom and for those in, in the back. Uh, have a good rest of the week. Enjoy the nice weather. Mm -hmm.